hello and welcome to my youtube channel this is dr ash i hope you guys are having a very good day today today i'm going to talk about uh, frkm primary exam and how to prepare for this exam as many of you know that uh, i work as a consultant emergency and acute medicine in nhs uk and uh, we have trained more than 600 emergency medicine physicians in united kingdom where our london clinical courses uh, frkm courses and we received so many emails and messages about uh, you know uh, doctors asking how to prepare for frkm primary so i thought i should make a detailed video message a comprehensive guidelines how to prepare for frkm primary exam and in the end and in, in the last component of this video i will <coughs> share how i prepared for my exam so let's talk about frkm primary um, this is uh, basically a basic sciences exam and it assesses your knowledge for anatomy, physiology, um, pharmacology, microbiology and all the components which we studied in medical school uh, during the first two, three years of our uh, medical college. Now, um, having said that this is a basic sciences exam but it assesses your very advanced clinical uh, knowledge and applications of those basic sciences so it's not just a very simple basic sciences exam it, you have to have a knowledge of what clinical consequences or what would be the clinical effects of uh, those basic sciences you studied back in in your medical college so uh, when we compare FRKM primary with MRCP1 or FR, you know, FCPS or FRCS, MRCS, the primary exams, I would say that FRKM primary is relatively or comparatively difficult than other basic sciences exams. Uh, why I'm saying that? Because I have an experience of doing MRCPs and FR MRCS theory exams by myself. So I can say that FRKM primary is... Uh, is, 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 is difficult compared to what uh, we study for other theory exams. Now, if you visit the college website, the Royal College of Emergency Medicine website, they have published 101 pages curriculum for FRKM primary exam. So isn't that uh, uh, surprising that for primary exam, the college has to publish 101 pages, which is a very thorough and it assesses your, uh, you know, it's, it's, it assesses your knowledge very broadly on a very broad spectrum and you know that emergency medicine itself is a very broad speciality uh, so the the knowledge required to pass this exam is, is really it has to be a very broad now let's come to a very straightforward uh, talk about how much time will it require you to pass FRKM primary what resources you should use and what should be your line of action now um, if you are working full-time and you're a very good student uh, uh, you know then for you six months is a very good time so keep yourself six months um, for this exam and say for example if you're preparing attempting exam in December you should start preparing from June and average you should study four to six hours after your job so that you can uh, meet that requirement if you're not studying if you're not working then of course and you're a good student in two and a half to three months you can probably pass this exam now uh, coming to the resources and the subjects the the college wants you to be familiar with uh, the the main components are anatomy physiology uh, microbiology pharmacology and some pain medications and anesthetics so now if you go and read the curriculum if it's in 101 pages and if everything you have to read then what is the point of this video isn't it so the purpose of this video is whenever you're reading anything you need to ask this question that the topic you are reading is it EM relevant or not so say for example if you're reading anatomy and if you're reading the uh, muscles so muscles of their neck, erector, spiny, and all those, they are not really very relevant. Their origin, insertions, how the vertebrae are, it's not really very important uh, when you're talking about origin and insertion. But when you're talking about the muscles of the hands, you should know where PFDs and FDS, they get attached. Because 
the anatomy of the hand, lacerations, you have to communicate with the plastic surgeons who are not on site, a correct anatomy knowledge will be required. Similarly, if you are studying the neck, then muscles of anterior triangle, again posterior triangle, you need to know the boundaries, their contents. So as soon as you start reading the subject, you, you should get an insight that is it EM relevant or not. So. Um, I will I will tell you how to you know what are the resources which are required and what you should be using so same goes with the pharmacology if you are reading pharmacology ask yourself is this EM relevant or not so you may come across so many hundred thousand medications sucralfate aluminium you know all those antiparasitics they are not really relevant you don't need to go through them you need to go through them pain medications cardiac medications antiarrhythmics you know antibiotics antiviral so it's a very precise kind of knowledge you need to go through so same goes with the physiology same goes with the uh, you know uh, microbiology uh, no one is going to ask you about kalazar and all weird kind of you know parasitic infections bacterial infections they will definitely ask you about meningococcemia pneumonias so get yourself familiar with those uh, stuff now uh, resources. What are the main resources for FRCM primary? When we were studying for FRCM primary, there weren't many resources really, so we had to go through uh, a very hard time. So now there are so many resources available and a lot of material, uh, online uh, resources available, so you can go through them. How you should divide your studies? I think. Uh, if I'm not wrong still college is testing anatomy you know very heavily so I would say more than 50% of your exam can be anatomy exam so read your anatomy very thoroughly um, I recommend you to read your anatomy from the place from the book where you read when you were in the medical school it's very easy because going through the same book is so easy that you know you read it before Snell and Snell's or uh, BD Chorosia or Essence, whatever book you studied, just go through them. It's very quick, it's very easier uh, compared to exploring a new, uh, you know, new book. So, uh, I would say take your old books out and just skim through them what were the most important topic you read it and it will be easier, it will be very quicker. So, maybe spend one month on the resources from your old books just you know to get yourself familiarized with all the necrosis apoptosis what whatever you studied back in you know in your medical college if you have access to those books it's easier or you can probably buy it and uh, go through them if you can't read all of them i would recommend anatomy you must go through them your old books which will be very very useful now resources wise uh, there are few books which you need to go through the most important one for FRCM primary at the moment I think is uh, there are two books mainly Mark Harrison FRCM primary revision notes and Musa Isa all-in-one notes if you ask me personally which one I recommend I recommend Musa Isa because it's very targeted it's more exam oriented and you will like it then for uh, you know there are online resources which is FRCM success you can go through them FRCM tutor uh, very good resource for MCQs and uh, make sure that you do pass test there are so many uh, exams you know you will find it on the forums so uh, let's divide this you know in your uh, how to break down your three months preparation I would say one month go through your old resources from where you studied one month you spend on um, you know the the target targeted books like uh, Mark Harrison or you can go through Musa Isa I recommend Musa Isa for you guys and um, then one month spend on FRCM tutor or FRCM success doing online resources this is what actually you will need to pass FRCM primary once you pass FRCM primary um, you have almost done 50% of this exam the rest are comparatively comparatively easier and smoother uh, compared to these uh, uh, primary exam 
do not forget Oxford Handbook of Emergency Medicine. You should always have it by your side. Read it when you're walking, running, all the time. There will be lots and lots of questions from Oxford Handbook of Emergency Medicine in your part 1, part B and even in part C. So um, there is a college curriculum. You can print that out. You can make the list. You can tick box them and start preparing. Keep yourself well oriented with the current guidelines about the NICE guidelines. Keep yourself aware with the sign guidelines, NICE pathways uh, for all the acute emergencies, upper GI bleed, TIAs, uh, anesthetics, pain medication, intensive care medications. So pharmacology should also be very, very targeted. Don't read everything, anything. So I hope this video was useful and you will start preparing for FRCM primary. And I wish you best of luck. Thank you very much, Dr. Ash.